With an aim to speed up the development of the Tejas Mark 1A program, Hindustan Aeronautics has decided to add a second flying test bed. Hindustan Aeronautics has decided to use an FOC Tejas Mark 1 aircraft, that will be used as a second flying test bed for the testing and certification of several improvements for the upcoming Tejas Mark 1A. The first flying test bed of the Tejas Mark 1A will conduct its first flight by March 2022, and the second flying test bed will take its flight by end of 2022, and these two flying test bed aircraft will prove most of the upgraded technologies by mid of 2023. The first two Tejas Mark 1A fighters will be delivered to the Indian Air Force by March 2024, that will feature the Israeli LM-2052 ASA radar, indigenous digital radar warning receivers, a digital map generator, digital flight control systems, external self-protection jammer pods, and new beyond visual range air-to-air -air missiles. India has issued a no-tam warning for the test of a surface-to-surface -surface missile at the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, for the period between 23rd to 25th of November 2021. There is a high probability that it could be the test of the 450 km range enhanced variant of the BrahMos supersonic cruise missile in full operational configuration, that will feature an indigenous booster, indigenous airframe section propulsion system power supply and many other major components. The US Air Force had recently signed an agreement for joint development of air-launched UAVs with India's Defense Research and Development Organization. As per latest reports, the seven-year project will cost $22.3 million, and the US Air Force Research Laboratory will team with scientists from the DRDO, to design develop and build a new air-launched unmanned aerial vehicle for underweather and standoff imaging and extended range communication. The first phase will include the design proof of concept, that will be followed by the development of new air-launched unmanned aerial vehicle system to meet operational requirements. The ambassador of Italy to India Vincenzo De Luca has said, that India and Italy are working towards resolving the issue regarding the ban on Leonardo. He also said, that Italian defence firms want to invest in India in the framework of Make in India initiative in very advanced fields, as well as participate in India's defence modernisation programme. The removal of ban will allow the Indian Navy to procure the much-needed 98 Black Shark torpedoes for six Scorpion submarines, and reports indicate that 20 torpedoes will arrive in fully formed condition, while 78 torpedoes will be licensed produced in India with transfer of technology by Bharat Dynamics Limited in Hyderabad. The biggest opposition to Navy's third aircraft carrier comes from the Indian Air Force which claims that it can provide air support to Navy's carrier battle groups from the shore-based airfields such as the Kar Nicobar base and the Thanjavur base, and this idea is strongly backed by the Chief of Defence Staff. With a nuclear propulsion solution nowhere in sight, the Indian Navy is now looking at integrated all-electric propulsion system, that is based on Rolls-Royce's MT-30 gas turbine alternators and four Finnish Watzler diesel generators, that will drive the electric motors provided by US firm GE Power Conversion, and will propel the 65,000 ton carrier at 60 km per hour, and also power the electromagnetic aircraft launch system. Experts have said, that the Indian Navy will have to expedite the ongoing procurement of 57 carrier-based multi-role fighters from the global market, or fast-track the indigenous twin-engine deck-based fighter, while the requirement of tactical airborne early warning aircraft could be fulfilled by a limited number of E-2D Hawkeye from the US.